Welcome everybody to I Am Possible. I am Joanna. And I am Irene and we will be your host for today's episode Frame of Mind. Today we will dive deeper in the topic of mental health issues and our guests will share their stories and experiences with us. And we will be joined by our special guest, Yuri Lentjes. But first, let's take a look at some facts. Did you know that worldwide 20% of people between 13 and 18 have experienced a severe mental health disorder? 50% of all cases of all mental health illnesses start at the age of 14. Depression is the leading issue people struggle with. 9 out of 10 people with mental health problems experience discrimination and negative responses which can lead to more loneliness and isolation. And that it is super important that we break these negative stigmas and start talking to each other. And our first guests for today are Madeleine Prinsen and Anouk Bindels. Madeleine has suffered from psychosis and Anouk is a psychologist specialized in mental health issues. A couple of weeks ago, we visited Madeleine at her house and we learned a lot about her own story. I'm Madeleine Prinsen. I was raised in the south of Limburg, very Catholic environment. My father died very early. Later on my brother killed himself. <laughs> we can we can cut. No, it's no problem. I can talk <laughs> with tears. And it's going. It's just like laughing, crying is just like laughing. My big big issue was intimacy and sexuality. When I fell in love with a woman, my whole life stood up aside. Later on, my ex-husband and that new partner, the woman, they fell in love and I was standing there. And I was working in a psychiatric hospital where it, it was so against my feelings what happened to his clients. So, well, I went nuts. But then I went nuts. I mean, that's a very, very heavy statement about oneself, really. How did you get so far to actually speak up and say, yes, I do have that issue. I want to talk about it. That I now want to talk about yeah, it. You literally Not say, when I went nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you now want to talk about it today. Yeah. Well, uh, first, I didn't went nuts. Mm. Eh? I always say, it's pain from the soul. Yeah. That's the only thing. And um, when I finally ended in the mental hospital, um, I think there is a lot of shame yeah. when you end in a hospital, in a psychiatric hospital. From the other side or from yourself? Like from myself, from but also for my family, yeah. for my friends, for my colleagues. Mm. Uh, no one knows how to handle with uh, psychological yeah. problems. Yeah. And uh, everyone has a lot of fear about it. Yeah. And in the beginning, people are coming, but if it's lasting longer than a couple of weeks, you don't see anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And I think in my time, especially, with psychosis, it was all covered up. You got pills in it, yeah. and we didn't talk about it. Mm. So, and that's what I needed. I needed to talk about that's, what's happening inside. Yeah, but because I, that's what I was also uh, saying. Like Anouk, I mean, do you have that as well? That people go like, okay, I really need that time to actually realize it's not me. You know, it's not me. It's an issue that I have, but I shouldn't be ashamed of it. Yes, of course. It takes, uh, see, like, if you're physically ill, yeah. it's very obvious if you break your leg. Yeah. But if you break something inside of your mind, uh, it depends on when it happens. Yeah. You know, there's a part in your brain that is non-declarative, which yeah. is the part that's also subconscious. Yeah. So all experiences, things that you experience and uh, that you have in your life, they go mostly into the subconscious mind. Yeah. And it's very difficult to access the subconscious mind. So it's also difficult to put the finger on it. Where did something really happen? What caused my mental illness? Yeah. And it's a complex situation because of our brain. Yeah. yeah. 
And do you have that? That do you felt like you that people really understood that as well? The people that helped you, did you always have that that they understood really? Because I mean, obviously. Often they don't know themselves. Maybe they've never been through this, but they've been trained to, to help. Mm -hmm. Is that a difference to you, personally, with your experiences? Well, uh, uh, it, uh, for me it was uh, good when there were people who uh, experience, experienced it themselves. Yeah. But in my time there were no uh, experienced experts. Yeah, it's different for us today. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, um, because it's so, it's such a big issue when you read it from books, or when you went yourself through a psychotic period. Mm -hmm. And if you ask hundred people with psychotic experiences, mm -hmm. you get hundred stories. So, uh, and it's what you say: things are um, in your unconscious um, thing. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah. So it's a whole way to find out what's, what, um, what triggered um, the pain or yeah. the, and I think the psychosis, it's a God-given present. God-given present. Another God-given present, actually, my dear, <laughs> is music. And we're here now, here have to perform for us an original song called Frame of Mind. Please give a warm welcome to Yuri Lentjes. Stand on noise, just stand at faces, the ugly smile. I'm feeling sick, I wanna scream, I wanna yell. Yesterday I went outside, so today I'm staying home. I thought I was ready, but I better deal with this alone. I wanna get out of this flesh, this ugly skin. I want to peel it off and scratch the itch with it It's better to resist and I feel guilty when I can I want it to hurt Cause it's a pain I understand The things decay, things they grow, things they'll change that's all I know the Things I dream And things I see Things that been And always be Things I'm trying to forget Things that are Inside of my head And if I'm up to it The things are not there How do I trust myself in knowing what I feel? And something that is not true feels so goddamn real. Can't stand the noise, the staring faces, the ugly smile. I know they are not here, but I can feel them all too well. Now things decay, things they grow, things they'll change. That's all I know The things I dream And things I see Things that been And always be Things I'm trying to forget Things that are Inside of my head And if I'm up to it The things are not there 
as if I marked you in. Things are not dead. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, this is really like moving, moving, and um, really? yeah, you sit down fast, <laughs> sorry, I get you some time. But Yuri, did you ever have any experiences such as like going to some dark place as well? Because I mean, when I hear this, it's just really like as if you know. Yeah, I got my fair share of, you know, anxiety and, and being down. And I don't, don't think it's, it's, you know, it's something like an illness or, some, or really that, but, you know, I've, I've I've always been, you know, busy with it from, from a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always been a, a thing, and uh, uh, so yeah, I, I actually, you know, learned to live with it now. So you know, I'm, I'm, I've got it under control, and uh, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a part of me, and sometimes part of my day or even my week or something. But you know, I, I control it, and that's that's good. But uh, you know, there's, you know, like I, I don't drive stuff like that. Uh, never finished school because that's just too much. You know, the anxiety was always just. I was just there, and uh, I had some therapy just all my life, actually, and mm -hmm. we never got to the core of it, and mostly because I quit. And you connect with it. Uh, when, when I got yeah. too close to the real problem, problem I, I mean, guess. So. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. like, the thing is, like, also, you're so young, and often it's kind of a myth that people, you know, are not young that have these issues, and actually, we looked into myth. Yes, we googled some of the myth, and one myth that we came up with is that uh, people who have a mental health illness, um, they shouldn't bother taking therapy or you know self-help. They should only you know take medication, which is not true because the treatment that people should receive is you know really varies uh, individually. So it can be both therapy or it could be a combination with you know medication. Yeah. So yeah. Madeleine, how do you feel about the myth of, yeah, people only needing to take medication and no therapy at all? Uh, well, I, I think I didn't need therapy. I needed love. I needed people who were there for me yeah. and who uh, wanted to sit next to me when I was in hell. And that um, um, requires... Uh, person who isn't afraid of my feelings yeah. so I can I can be open and I think what I said in the beginning it's pain and it's rage about you don't know what about it yeah and I mean we see that now even also through the music pain you just have to talk about it thank you so much for this both of you and up next we'll be talking about several different methods of dealing with these mental health issues if you struggle with any issues of that kind yourself, feel free to go on our website, www.iampossibletv.com, where you can find information and support associations. We'll be right back. This program is sponsored by Albert Heijn Brabant Plein. Within our Albert Heijn, we offer a variety of healthy food. Let's take a look. With the amount of products we have, you can be certain that you'll find exactly what you need. The friendly personnel is always there to help. Luckily, for students from the NHTV, it's only a 400 meter walk to the Albert Heijn. We hope to see you soon at Albert Heijn Brabant Plein. Welcome back to I'm Possible. So far we've talked with Malain and Anouk about their stories. As an expert, Malain and a colleague of hers, Dominique, worked together, you know, uh, creating photo voice and helping people with mental health illnesses and their stigmas. Let's get an insight on it. My biggest problem was the stigma and self-stigma about 
uh, my so-called illness. And so uh, when I was in uh, Boston and there I saw photo voice, I saw clients talking next to a picture about stigma and they had a story about it and I was so moved so um, and I was working together with Dominique and um, so when I came home I said we need to do something with this project and uh, that's how it started and we did we make a course for clients and I did my story and Dominique made her story and so yes we are all human beings and we all have to recover from things yeah together with her colleague Dominique Madeleine conducted sessions with their clients where they created photo voice which they would later on present to their families and friends well in the beginning uh, Madeleine and uh, and I we dev developed the course for the uh, students because we call the, the clients the students of our group and uh, the students are making a, a photo of their stigma or self stigma and make their uh, own story in their own language and at the end of the course um, they present it to their uh, uh, intimate, uh, the people who are really close to them so it can be the father or the mother or maybe the child and they know the story but now they hear it in the, uh, the, their own language and, and from the other side so you get a, a round picture of one person and uh, it, it makes it really interesting to make a new dialogue together so that's, uh, that's how it works Photo voice can be created in a group or individually, mostly together with a facilitator who guides you through the process. When I first uh, did voluntary work with cycle lessons for foreign people, I walked in and I thought they all see that I'm mad. And it isn't. And uh, because we think, everyone thinks, oh, they are lunatics. Even if you can't see it from the outside. Dominique and Madeleine met at a GGZ event and since then have become close friends. Well, I think it was in 2006, it was in, uh, in Utrecht uh, on a uh, workshop where Madeleine was uh, presenting herself and uh, I was connected to her in a, in a little group we had and we talked and I thought, oh, she's really inspiring and uh, we had a nice connection. Yes, and I think the the the, uh, the success of our uh, uh, relationship relationship, the relationship mm -hmm. is that we talk about everything very open. And I think what what was the oil is the humor. Yeah. Because the the subject is very uh, deep yeah. and painful yeah. sometimes, and but then we need light. Yeah. So and humor brings light. Yeah. So Anouk, looking at this clip of, you know, seeing the photo voice technique, what do you think about the technique? Would you use it maybe even yourself on your own clients if you, you know, see how it works? Definitely, definitely. I think it's very good that clients share their stories, that they get heard, how it is from their perspective that we, also professionals, but also the, the people around them, get a good view of their inner world and what's going on inside, and that they have a, um, a method or uh, something to talk about it. And I think creativity is a very beautiful uh, uh, method to use. Mm, he knows that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, Madeleine, how do you, uh, what was the type of feedback that you received from people who have done the photo voice? Uh, most of the people who did this course was uh, uh, a lot of um, lightness that they could talk about, for instance, psychotic experiences, and we could laugh about it because it's laughable at some times, and it's when you are manic. You do very strange things, but and sometimes when people said to me uh, what I did, and I was ashamed. Um, but it's it needs to get in the open, and that that it's it's not crazy. All the things I see or hear or smell, 
they are real at that moment. And if I'm able to talk about it, and if I can give sense, make sense of it, that is helpful. And uh, so when we, when we were in the group, uh, well, the most important things is I thought uh, people think, look at me, that I'm crazy. But I had also a lot of images about psychiatrists, psychologists, mm -hmm. in, the, <laughs> in the mental <laughs> hospital. <laughs> so we all do it. Yeah. And we make yeah. pictures of people. But it, well, when you have a psychological problem, you are with the losers. Yeah. Yes. But laughing about this, I mean, this laughing is really about like, isn't there a point where you're saying, yeah, but now I can't laugh? I mean, everybody has that. I have that. Like, you know, what do you do then? Do you then put yourself up? Oh, no, I have to laugh. Oh, not really, is it? I mean, you know, there's, you know, laughing, and sometimes there's just times where you just have to cry. You just have a big, fat cry. Yes, and I'm still crying. Or screaming about things. Screaming. Screaming. At your house. Uh, well, mostly on the bike and then in, oh, the, in really. the woods. Yes, I'm really. It needs to get out. And what have people actually seen that? I mean, I mean, maybe well, that's a silly question. People but... heard me. So mm -hmm. when I was cycling and it was very quiet, mm -hmm. and then I started to scream and someone screamed back. <laughs> so I screamed again, and it's no problem. What? And if you do it in the city, people. It's, 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 uh, if it is more allowed to be uh, in rage or to have pain, you see, when you see in, in the city people walk with faces like mm. this, and if they could cry, it would help such a lot. Yeah, and it's, it's also for people that don't have um, these issues even. I mean, often we have those, you know, we have those issues that we just have a bad time. And I can yes. really learn from that. You know, you're telling me this, I'm like, okay, Actually, maybe I should just hop on the bike and just scream it out. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Do you, would you do the same? Like, you do the yeah, same. I did. I did. You did? Yes. I have an experience after my husband died. Yeah. And um, I had periods in grief. Yeah. And I was walking with my dog at the beach, and suddenly it came out, and I just started screaming. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's also about how then you contain it. Yeah. When when you really get into a psychotic episode, sometimes you can't contain it. Yeah. And then then you really go out of the box. Yeah. And and of course, when you really go out of the box, people will judge that yeah. especially well, they when it anxious. yes exactly mm -hmm. especially when it's on the street and the, you yeah. know I mean in Amsterdam walking in Amsterdam you sometimes <laughs> have this uh, in your field yeah. coming up also and then of course you if you're not known to it yeah. you get afraid yeah and the thing is with the judgment ex exactly I think we really, really need to know and experience what you people go through what people mm -hmm. with mental health issues go through really and it's because it's really one thing to hear about it and another entirely to actually experience yourself. And our participant, Yuan, did just that. Let's take a look. Hello, everyone. I'm here in Breda, uh, and this is our lovely participant, Yuan, sitting next to me. Uh, can you tell us more about how you're feeling and what do you expect to be doing today? Uh, I'm feeling quite happy, you know. This wonderful Dutch weather is filling me with positive energy. But for the experiment, I have no idea what's going to happen whatsoever, and this I'm really, really excited to begin. So the experiment is going to go like this. I'm going to hook you up with these headphones, which are going to play um, a sound, an audio file, which is closely going to represent what's happening inside of a, inside the head of a person with schizophrenia. So you are going to do some shopping for us in our time, which is close by, and we'll see how that goes if you find the experience interesting. So, are, do you have any questions? No, I'm ready. I think we should begin. Okay, so let's go, guys. Okay, uh, jam, chocolate. Oh, it's quite hard to concentrate with this on. Baking soda, eggs, flour, sea salt, milk.
I am down to half of the list of groceries that I had to buy. I'm doing my best to memorize the prices so I can, uh, after all, buy all these all these products. But without the voices, it's it's really hard to put my mind into something and concentrate. So I'm back here with Yuan again. Uh, can you tell me something more about your experience? Did, how did how did I, I, I can say two words. It was something different. I uh, wasn't expecting anything from what happened. It was really, really exciting for me. I was hearing a hundred different voices in my head. It was really confusing. And uh, I think I did well. I think I, I completed most of the list with groceries, but I forgot the flower. Um, one hard thing was the price. I tried my best to remember all the different prices, but the voices in my head were telling different numbers, which, which just distracted me. But in the end, well, I don't know, I now, my views for people with schizophrenia changed completely. I believe, I, I can't imagine them living with all of this every single day. And what about you guys? Do you think that you'll be able to deal with this on a daily basis? Thank you for tuning in with us and goodbye. And I'm here in the audience, Johan is with us. Johan, thank you so much for doing this for us and yeah, what do you th say now, like after going through this basically for only a minute, you said it yourself, you can't really think of how it feels like to actually do it, or have this going on in your head your entire life. Yeah, I believe it's one thing to talk about a person's experience with this um, disease and it's another thing to go in this person's sure. boots and experience it for yourself. Definitely. Um, for me, I did it for one minute and I don't want to do it again. Uh, it was really... It, it's stressful for me. It, it, it's, it was so strange, something completely different for me. I, I have never experienced anything like this before. Yeah. It's like I have 17 other people in my head telling me different things at the same time, and it's complete chaos. And it makes it's, yeah. things complicated, yeah, I, right? It's, yeah. I even got scared at one point because it's like... Um, That's what I thought, yeah, yeah scary. It, so, some, of, some of the things that, I, uh, like, that you could hear are like, quite scary. For example, yeah. There was one voice that was uh, telling me to jump, 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 jump. Yeah. And that's, I, I think that's like, that's a lot of stress to live with yeah. every single day throughout but your I life. But I appreciate you did that. Thank you so much for Thank doing you. this. Thank you. Thank you. So, Yuri, you yourself have experienced, you know, mental health you know, issues. And looking back at the clip, how do you feel about someone else who is, yeah, seemed as healthy, experiencing mental health themselves, you know, mental health issues? Um... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just, you know, just... Uh, it's funny that he said, like, it's scary and stuff like that, and stressy, and, and just like, it's just, just like it's some pounding or something. And because, uh, uh, you know, I, I think when, when you have it, you get used to it at some point, you know, and just like, it's, you, know, you never get really used to it, of course, I, I guess, I don't, I don't know. Um, so, so it's funny that, that those are the things that are just like, it's just, just like, leaving me alone, and stuff like that, and yeah. So you would kind of say that, um, for, as someone who is dealing with some uh, mental health illness, um, it is kind of a part of you that you are so used to it that, you know, for you it's kind of normal. I, I, I guess, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's, it's, sometimes it, it's not normal, sometimes it's uh, yeah. just rough. Uh, but yeah, most of the time. And with the screaming, I actually, you know, make money of it. So, you know, it's just, right. it's, 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 it's a part of what I do actually now, because it's just, you know, it's, it's part of me and um, well, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad. Yeah, so. but this is exactly what we're so, so grateful you came in today. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we hope you enjoyed the show and gained more knowledge about mental health illness and how to support each, yeah, each other with these issues. Exactly. And we have now another song by Yuri. Uh, called Nowhere. We want to thank our sponsors, Konstantin Vascarino, Albert Hein, and John Flora. And tomorrow's episode at I Am Possible will be all about the LGBTQ community. Thank you so much for joining today. Till then, and goodbye.
Today I'm going nowhere Tomorrow I'll be lost There must be something out there Something I got Wanna leave right in the morning But I don't know where to go And something's gonna happen But when I just don't know So suck up your tears and move on Don't drown in your own blood And if it's out of stand up At least that for what you got Cause it all be better If you just count your own luck And you are not alone at all And you're getting somewhere Somewhere you never thought No, you are not alone at all Alone at all. And don't remind me of my failures, cause I had not forgotten them. Don't need a confrontation to remember who I am. All the things I didn't do When I had the chance And all the things I never said In the name of sweet romance And I know I'm going nowhere But tomorrow I'll be back I know I'm doing better if I just do my best Cause it all be better If you just count your own life No, I am not alone at all alone at all No, I am not alone